Welcome back guys and now we're looking at collecting duct in renal pharmacology. Collecting duct is the final place that you're going to meet. So you have the glomerulus, then you have the PCT, then you have the loop of Henley, then you have the DCT. Yeah. And finally all of them have to lead to the collecting duct. So this is your collecting duct. Collecting duct is the final place of reabsorption of sodium ions final place of reabsorption of sodium ions this is a very important point how does this happen it happens through a channel called e n a c channel okay so it if you want the full uh, what what do you say the expanded form it's nothing but epithelial sodium channel so epithelial sodium channel now the exchange of sodium with potassium occurs at this point okay at the collecting duct the final place of reabsorption of sodium it occurs by taking in sodium and letting out potassium to maintain the electronic balance this is how we experience potassium loss in all the other drugs all the other drugs we have looked at so far are going to experience potassium loss why because we are increasing the sodium excretion so by the time the urine reaches the collecting duct we are going to have increased amount of sodium and to exchange this we are going to have increased amount of potassium loss this is how we were incurring potassium loss in all the other drugs because we were having increased that's how we were incurring all this sodium and potassium loss okay now we'll come back there are two ways by which we can prevent this so mainly the drugs which will be acting on the collecting duct are called potassium sparing diuretics okay potassium sparing which means they are going to spare the loss of potassium that is the main function which the potassium sparing diuretics do now this can be done by two methods one method is which drug acts on the collecting duct that is aldosterone okay aldosterone acts by promoting sodium reabsorption and at the same time potassium loss so aldosterone is responsible for sodium reabsorption and loss of potassium so you can either block this by providing antagonists to aldosterone okay so that's one of the method you provide aldosterone antagonists or another simple method is you directly block the potassium channels it's simple as that if you block potassium channels you are not going to have any exchange of sodium to potassium and hence safe again two methods so we'll directly look at the drugs yeah now aldosterone antagonists are mainly spironolactone 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 after administration gets converted into its active form that is can renal so the important keyword would be enon okay can run on spinal actor which gets converted can run another one understand antagonists so another drug which is important is a play renon so renon becomes the key suffix okay now what do they actually do they are steroid they are out so these are steroid derivatives steroid derivatives spironolactone and epilerone what they do is aldosterone since it's also a steroid it has to enter the cell it forms a complex enters the nucleus and in the nucleus it's going to promote the gene okay it promotes the gene which is responsible for the formation of enac epithelial sodium channel what this do they block it so reduced expression of the gene responsible for enac which means reduced number of channels reduced number of channels which means decreasing the action that's how they work this is how the steroid based work now what about the second class of drugs the class of drugs which said that they would directly block the potassium channels they are amyloride okay and you have triamterin triamterin and triamterin and amyloride 
the good thing about them is they have a high duration of action okay so 12 to 24 hours compared to the steroid derivatives which we saw spironolactone and uh, the other thing or uh, yeah epilerenone they have slow onset of action these things they have slow onset but the duration is 24 to 72 hours so if you want a daily dose this would be daily once and they have a once day to a three day duration so it could be a weekly twice or weekly thrice that's how they work now effects the effects of them is you're going to have decreased sodium reabsorption and hence you're going to have decreased potassium loss so you're maintaining the potassium ion levels in your body it's a good thing to prevent potassium loss so how where could you use them where what is the practical applications of where you're going to use them where could you use them potassium loss so you're going to decrease potassium loss hypokalemia you have a hypokalemia and then you want to prevent potassium loss you can use this second thing where you could use it is see all the other drugs all the other diuretics which we have discussed till now they increased sodium output except acetazolamide carbonic anhydrous inhibitors now sodium then moves on to the collecting duct where it gets exchanged for potassium promoting potassium loss so that leads to hypokalemia this thing leads to hypokalemia so if these things are added or used as combinations with all the other diuretics it's a good thing so you're having sodium loss as well increased urine output then you're having potassium loss prevented so you're maintaining your potassium balance and your sodium balance and fluid balance it is a very beautiful combination to use okay now these things are not used on their own because they can lead to hyperkalemia hyperkalemia leading to acidosis so on alone very rarely used but in combination very commonly used so that is one of their uses that they are preventing the hypokalemia from the all the other drugs next aldosteronism what is aldosteronism aldosteronism is a disease where you have increased aldosterone yeah and increased aldosterone exactly sodium increased reabsorption potassium decreased and to prevent these symptoms you can again use potassium sparing diuretics yeah, you can use potassium sparing diuretics to alleviate the symptoms of aldosteronism. Aldosteronism, if it gets to increase, you can have heart failure. Yeah, so to prevent heart failure, again, one of the most beautiful uses, first use was hypertension and all those things were using diuretics which promote potassium loss. Second thing, you have heart failure. Okay, but one, one, one absolute contraindication, absolute contraindication would be AC inhibitors and ARBs. What is AC inhibitors? Angiotensin converting enzyme, okay, which are responsible for angio converting of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Where are they used? They are used in hypertension. Angiotensin receptor blockers also used in hypertension. Okay, now what, what's their function? Angiotensin receptor blockers is a method by which our body aims at increasing angiotensin mechanism i'm talking about angiotensin mechanism angiotensin mechanism is a method by which our body raises our bp yeah so you're using this to reduce the bp and then you're using the diuretics also to reduce the bp there is a chance of low bp and collapse of the patient so absolute contraindication and also potassium sparing diuretics should not be never be combined well depends but mostly it's a general rule that potassium sparing diuretics should not be combined with potassium pills potassium supplements because you're going to lead up to hyperkalemia it's not a good thing you need all your ions in a perfect balance you don't want them low you don't want them high and that can lead to hyperkalemia avoid that now adverse effects adverse effects of epilerena is gynecomastia okay why gynecomastia because it's a steroid 
steroid can lead to increased fat deposition which can lead to gynecomastia and it can also lead to anti-androgenic anti-androgenic symptoms okay so anything against males so while using epiteranons in males you can be faced with gynecomastia or you can be faced with anti-androgenic so female characteristics starts appearing so be careful while using epiteranon in males okay and i think that's most of it i think it covers all the important things i have been trying to finish up things faster okay so only one more topic which left which left is uh, adh that is antidiuretic hormone we'll finish that and we'll wrap up entirely with the diuretics thank you guys for watching